Shapes by Free Eyes up for review today. This is the example from the asset store, and you can see some really cool effects that you can generate with it. I decided to use this for creating this Wheel of Fortune, which seemed like an apt little exercise. And I'll use this to choose the winner for the Ray Fire voucher. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. I've got a new project created and I've imported shapes in already. And looking at the quick start guide, you can see it's, uh, it's just enough to get you started, but it's best as is the case with most assets, look at the online documentation. You can see this is actually quite well put together. Um, it's nice on the eyes. <laughs> That's the first thing uh, I thought to myself when I opened this and it's an easy read. I mean, she's got a good sense of humor and you'll see that as you read along and there's quite a few shapes to, to choose from, um, 2D and 3D. And she's got some good examples here on how the API works. See, this is a, might be a, a bit different. I mean, it was a bit different for me. Uh, it's using some features of Unity, which I haven't used before. And her API is a bit reminiscent of the good old way of using OpenGL directly. If any of you have done that, it'll be a bit more familiar to you guys. But otherwise, this is a bit different and one thing I will say is the example she's included is a bit math intensive and I'll just show you uh, what she's included here. So this first example is a first person shooter. You've seen a glimpse on the video I showed earlier. Okay, so your left mouse click is to shoot, right is to charge up this charge bar on the left and you see this looks absolutely awesome. Okay. Um, shows you your direction or your bearing on top there and just a nice animation here on the left really cool but looking at the script yeah um, if you guys aren't math inclined I will do a breakdown of this uh, in a later video if you guys want to um, if you click on player here this is how it's broken up she's got a few scripts here it's FPS controller firstly which links through to the crosshair and then the ammo bar and the charge bar. Yeah, you can see a lot of math going on there. Which, yeah, if you if you really work through this, you can wrap your head around it. But I decided to try using the API by myself, which I'll do in a bit. Okay, the next example is this procedural tree. This is a bit simpler to follow. Okay, you can see this nice effect. Opening this script, yeah, it's a lot easier to follow this one here. Because she's got a nice little gallery of all the shapes. Uh, I've got my gizmos turned on too, too big, so I'm just going to turn it off. This is some nice examples of all the shapes that are available. So you can click through each one and see all the settings as she's chosen on the right hand side. So that's a nice little reference point for you to check out. Okay, you can see the, the gradient she's got set up for these. This is a nice little honeycomb effect. I really like this one here. And these discs, these you can make some really cool effects like quite easily. So I suspect you guys will be, and I will be in my future projects using these quite often. Let's see, spinning color discs. Let's play that. This is a nice one, also a bit mathematical, but not too complicated. If you've done some math, like, you know, just basic trigonometry involved, design and cosine functions, it's not too difficult to follow. So let's see what the code is like for this one called spinning color discs. And you can see this is a short script for a very nice effect. It just creates the discs and applies some basic trigonometric functions to it and gets that nice effect. So you guys can follow it and try to break it down. Like I said, if you guys want me to break this down in another video, I will do that for you, but I'm not going to do that here. This is just a quick review. I've created a new scene in my project and I'm going to test out the user interface from the Unity editor. You can right click, click on shapes and this way outline. So the interface is very easy. You can see here it's set to billboard. You can change that to flat 2D for your HUDs and volumetric 3D if you need something more substantial. So you can see what that does. You can change the detail level here from minimal. You can see how that changes over there. 
Uh, medium is what it defaults to and extreme with more vertices. I'm going to leave it to medium and let's see here to change the width and end caps distances from the center there. Uh, to scale it up and down, use the thickness. I wouldn't suggest using the scale. I mean, I'm sure she's added these in for a reason. You can edit the points in scene as well to move it up and down. I'm sure there was a way to scale it as well. Okay, I don't see it now, but that's fine. Changing the thickness is easy enough. Color mode over here, you can change that to select your colors for the one end, select a different color for the other end, and that blends together. And here you can ch change the end caps from something flat and a rounded one. Okay, that's an extended one and that's rounded. And then a nice one, this uh, dashed one is quite nice. Uh, you can change the size here, see what this does. Exactly what you would expect. You can change the offset as well. So you can imagine changing this in code will give you a nice effect, right? So for flat, flat 3D, you can change the, the style as well at the bottom here. You can see that is quite nice. And of course your color blending as well works. So that is awesome. And if we select some other tools, you'll see they all follow a very similar usage pattern. Let's go to disk. Disk is the one I really like. You'll see for some of them, the 3D option is available or not. So with your disk, it's not available. Color mode, this is a radial, is available, so we can start from one color going outwards, that blends in nicely. You can make this uh, okay into different uh, different shapes, so this is a pie shape, you've got this uh, ring, and then an arc as well. So if you want to make a little Pac-Man type thing, go and use this one. You can see just by changing the start and end angles, and of course you can edit this in scene as well where you can change the size or thickness and the radius and then the arc size. So yes, very easy to use. So this is the example that I created. Let me just show you what it looks like. So it's these um, pie shapes that I've got drawn here. And this disc that spins around, and this is basically going to be my list of contestants that I'll be using for the draw later. Let's see how this done quickly. I want to go through the script of mine quickly. Um, this is not a tutorial, so I'm just going to be brief and show you the important bits, just so you know what you're in for. Because this is a bit different to our standard Unity coding. So firstly, import the shape's namespace. And this is a big difference. Instead of extending mono behavior, you are extending immediate mode shape drawer which gives you access to this draw shapes, which you are going to override. And this is quite important. This is to manage your draw calls, so set up your draw context and clean up resources. This bit over here is for basically setting up your, almost like default values for some of your geometry that you'll be drawing. For example, your color here, if you don't specify it in one of your specific draw calls, then it will default to white. Otherwise, you can override it. Um, you will see that each draw goes, for example, here is pi gradient radial, which in my case draws these little pi bits over here. These have a bunch of uh, methods that you can actually, or a bunch of overridden methods, overloaded methods, sorry. Go into the class and have a look. These are not all in the documentation, it's not really necessary and and just go in and have a look or use your autocomplete functionality to see what's available to you. And yeah, well, that's basically it. Uh, for each kind of shape that you want to draw, they follow a similar pattern. So really straightforward. Just where it gets a bit complicated is when you have to uh, do some of the math. It's not really necessary to get all the complicated. Depends on your use case. Okay, so all in all, the documentation is very good. Actually funny in places. It was a nice read. The examples I found, yeah, maybe a bit too mathematical. So keep that in mind. I will be doing some tutorials though for some more simple examples. Um, the UI is very easy to learn. Scripting, yeah, more for intermediate users. And then lastly, the usefulness, you can do a lot with this. So get creative, especially if you are mathematically inclined, I think you can get the most out of this. But otherwise, even so, 
I think you can still do a lot with this asset. So if you can afford it, get it. So as you can see, this will generate randomly every single time that I run it. I went to my last video and got all the comments that you guys made to just a few of you so that makes my life a bit easy because I manually plugged it in maybe next time I will write the script to pull it directly from my YouTube channel okay so that's my contestant list that, that's another script and I've added all your names in okay so the moment of truth let's see who ends up winning the Ray Fire voucher Press play and let's see. The lucky winner is But Gamey. Excellent. You, I will be in touch with you, But Gamey, and um, please enjoy the voucher. Rayfire is such an awesome asset. And for the rest of you guys, the next time I will be giving away a Nani novel voucher. The developer was kind enough to give me a voucher for that. So Please leave a comment in the description with any feedback about my videos, whether it's good or bad, and I'll enter you into the next row. Or anything else that you have in mind. So, until next time, guys, enjoy.